Okay, I've got another fascinating piece of ethnographic art, this time from Africa, and uh, I didn't know anything about these until I saw this piece here, and this is instantly one of my favorite things to just know about now. So apologies for all pronunciations on this. This is a Nakondi from the Congo region of Africa, and it was a traditional idol. These were always, as far as I know, wooden figures in a human likeness with nails pounded in. So let's take a look at this one before we get into the purpose of these. Just incredibly striking, right? And yes, those are nails that are pounded throughout, and that was always the feature, the method. So we're just going to look at this guy from various angles. Absolutely incredible. There is a lot of variation in these. One of the coolest things you can do to spend a few minutes is just do a Google image search for Nakundi, and you'll see various examples of these. And the easiest way for us in the West to uh, grasp this, and that's such a gross over oversimplification, of course, but is think of it as like a communal voodoo doll. Here are a pair of them keeping vigil in a Congolese village. And uh, going back to the voodoo thing, this could be used to basically get revenge, right? Exact revenge on someone who you thought deserved it, but also to kind of maintain order in a village. And these are considered a subset of uh, uh, Minkisi, also spelled like Inkisi without the M-I in front. But anyway, so kind of a religious mythological idol, something you would appeal to, but this in particular, the Nakondi, translates as the hunter. So again, this was about getting someone who deserved uh, to be got. For instance, uh, say someone in the village stole from you, or you thought they did, then you could go appeal to the chief for permission, and you would pay for this, to go pound a nail into the Nakondi and basically curse your enemy. The victim of this curse, and the curses could take various forms depending on the nature of the Nakondi, so it's really interesting, there were different kinds, like Nakondi of the water, this, that, and the other. So a Nakondi of the water would exact the revenge once the target was actually on or in water. But the hunter would do his job, and the victim would usually, you know, be seen as suffering uh, ill effects in terms of health. So if someone's really sick, deathly ill, maybe the hunter has gotten to them, and maybe they were guilty of something previously. So if you were struck by one or thought you were, you could actually appeal to the chief to pound a nail in yourself to try to kind of mitigate the effect, kind of get an undo if possible. And this is really interesting as some of the literature points out, this means the chief is having conflict kind of driven to him so he gets to mediate and know what's going on and help maintain the social order. And these weren't just used in feuds either, so like I said, it was a public display, like you saw in that old picture, and it would be used to protect the village, to swear a public oath, you're kind of saying you understood that this hunter would come after you <laughs> if you broke your oath. And that sounds pretty scary to me. I would not want to be haunted by this thing. The practice of using these was ended about 1920, and it was Christian missionaries that did it, uh, which is no fun, <laughs> and uh, you can only imagine their reaction when they first came across these. It's not exactly a, uh, a, you know, the figure of a saint. At least not their kind of saint. And that's my very simplistic overview of uh, something that is really fascinating visually, culturally, and historically. Thanks.